Hi everyone, so what I've learned from the diversity topic is through the means of having a range of people with various racial, ethnic, socioeconomic, and cultural backgrounds and various lifestyles, experience, and interests. So diversity means differences. People may be different in many ways including race or ethnicity, age, disabilities, cultural, language, appearance, or religion. In the PowerPoint presentation that they've discussed, um, there's this one quote that says, It is not about how we differ, it is all about embracing one another's uniqueness. So, for me, it means understanding that everyone is unique and recognizing our individual differences. So, this can be along the dimensions of race, ethnicity, gender, sexual orientation, socioeconomic status, age, physical abilities, religious beliefs, political beliefs, or other ideologies. The importance of diversity in hospitality and tourism industry is that it creates a more positive work environment, increases job satisfaction, brings diverse voices into the decision-making process, fosters creative ideas, and helps segment and better understand customer base so having a culturally um, diverse team can help us better understand and improve the service for different types of guests so um we can tap into different views ideas and perspectives to innovate and offer new and different services Diversity management is an organizational process used to promote diversity and inclusion in the workplace. So, this process involves implementing policies and strategies in hiring, management, training, and more. So, their goal is to promote fairness and equality and leverage the advantages diverse organizations offer. The administrative agencies has a source of power that comes from a legislature to fulfill their role that sets standards, solve the problems of public interest, and serve the people. Make rules and regulations, prosecute those refused to follow the regulations, make decisions on those actions that comes before claims and hearings, and investigate compliance. Next is the delegation doctrine that is based on the idea that the power to make laws is vested in Congress by the Constitution and should not be delegated to other branches or entities. The intelligible principle helps to ensure that laws are not arbitrary or vague but rather have a clear and understandable basis. Claims refer when someone files a claim, they are stating that they have been wrong in some way and they seeking a remedy or compensation. On the other hand, hearings is an opportunity for both sides to prevent their case, cross-examine witnesses, and provide supporting evidence. This includes also the steps in obtaining hearings to ensure fairness, consistency, transparency, and accountability in the decision-making process of government agencies. Administrative law, also known as administrative regulation or regulator law, is a set of law that govern the creation and operation of federal and state government agencies. Administrative law, status grant agencies power and establish substantive law rules. Agency made law includes administrative rules, regulation reports, opinion, and orders, and legal principles govern public agents' action when completing with private rights. Executive branch, applying keeping up with the law is the responsibility of the executive branch, which is made up of the president, vice president, cabinet, executive departments, independent agencies, board, 
commission and committees. Legislative branch. The legislative branch, which is consist of the Senate and the House of Representatives, is in charge of making law with the other levels of government. Judicial branch. The legal system in a country can be referred as the judicial branch of government. It is in charge of interpreting and applying law and has power to decide on that valid law. Equality in workplace, it involves treating everyone fairly, recognizing individual needs, respecting difference, and embracing unique characteristics. A tactical training program is a process to address workplace diversity issues, including communication barrier, employer requirements, gender equality, general differences, conflicting beliefs, disability discrimination, isolation, time-consuming implementation and resistance to change. The program aims to monitor progress, promote pay equity, recognize international holidays, access business guidelines, and encourage continuous feedback. Trade Union Campaigning What is Trade Union Campaigning? A union organizing campaign is essentially a drive or a movement to form a union within organization. It aims to protect and advance the interests of its members in the workplace. Lobbying on Equality and Diversity 
but lobbying on equality and diversity. First, its efforts often focus on influencing legislations and policies that address discrimination and promote diversity. It ensures engaging with business and external engaging with business and organization to encourage diversity and inclusion within their structure. Equality bargaining. Equality bargaining is a term that refers to a union that inclusions of equal opportunity and equal pay issues in the agendas for collective bargaining between trade, unions, and employees. So what is collective bargaining? Collective bargaining is the process in which working people through their unions negotiate contracts with their employees to determine their terms of employment including their pay, benefits, hours, leave, and job health and safety policies ways to enjoy balance work and family and more.